morning. This is Phil Carlton. I saw a question the other day with someone asking how to create a patch, so I thought this morning I would talk real quickly about the border tab here in Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery. Now, before I begin, let me just remind you, I do have a page over on YouTube under my name, Phil Carlton, and you can also follow my page on Facebook, which is Premiere Plus Phil, and if you like that page, you'll get notified when I post a new video or information about a new lesson. So let's get started. So I'm going to go over, I'm in Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery, and I have a 100 by 100 hoop, and I'm going to go to the Border tab. On the Border tab, there are two sections. On the left section, we can create a border, what we think of as a border, something that goes around a design. On the right side, we have Motif Underline. Really quickly, let me show Motif Underline. In this area right now, we're set to a length of 100 millimeters. If I click on the Select Motif button, it will bring up our Motif dialog box. And by default, it's using this star. That's the default motif. I'm not going to change it today. I'm just going to click OK. I have the length set at 100. If I click the green check mark to apply, it's going to bring in a row of that is 100 millimeters long of that motif. I'm going to click delete to get rid of it. The other option is I can tell it the number of repeats. So by default, the number of repeats is six. If I click the green check mark, it brought in six of that motif. The part I want to concentrate on today, though, is the left side of this tab, and that is going to be our main border tools. Now notice right now, I don't have any design in my hoop. I don't have anything selected. So if I use the border tool right now, it will create a border around the edge of the hoop. The first piece I want to look at to the far left is the margin. And the margin, when I don't have anything selected, is going to be the distance away from the edge of the hoop. So if I set this margin to 10 millimeters, I'm going to leave it at just the default satin line for now. I'm going to come all the way over to the right side, click the green check mark. I have a grid set up of 10 millimeters. So you can see that it created this border 10 millimeters in from the edge of my hoop. I want to show one other piece over to the far left. I'm going to click the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of this one. And I'm going to put a check mark in rounded corners and then click the green check mark on the left side to apply again. And that will create a border for you with rounded corners. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that for the rest of my examples, but I did want you to see what that one would do. I do you want to point out I can do this with a running stitch. I can do this with a motif or a decorative stitch or a triple stitch. And with any of those, if you'll click on the Options button, it will bring up the dialog box so you can set the, do the options for that stitch. So if I wanted to have a triple stitch running right around the edge of my hoop, for example, I might say I want my stitch length to be 3.5. Click OK. If I take my margin to 0, when I click the green check mark, it created that triple stitch all the way around the outside edge of the hoop. I've brought in a simple monogram so we can see the other function on the border tab. So with this monogram selected, I'm going to go to the border tab. And I'm going to set my margin this time to about 6 millimeters. And I'm going to leave group checked for just a moment. And I'm back on my satin line. And I believe if I look at my options for that satin line, I'm at the default of 4 millimeters. I'm going to leave that width. I think that will work. And I'm going to click the green check mark. Now I do want to point out there are two green check marks on this page. The left side is going to be my border tab, or my border function, and the right side is going to be that motif underline where I brought in the row of stitches. So when I have a design selected, it looks at my margin setting and it applies the margin to that design. So whether it's a design you've brought in from the software, whether it's a super design, a monogram, something you've created, whatever you have selected, it's going to apply the border to that. And this is where undo is your friend. If you look at that and it's not quite large enough, you can click undo, maybe change it to eight millimeters, click the green check mark on the left to apply, and now I've created a border sized to that monogram. Notice I have groups checked by default, and if we look here, we notice I have orange handles around my designs now. So I have two different pieces here. I have my border, and I have my monogram. And because group is checked, I can now treat them as one object. I could go to the Home tab and ungroup them if I wanted to work with them separately, but it's good to understand what those orange handles are telling us. I'm going to click Undo a couple of times. If I uncheck group, and then click the green check mark to apply. Now it's created that border again, 
but because I don't have the orange handles and group was unchecked, that border is a separate object. I do want you to also see that the border has white handles, so unlike the lettering or super designs or even frames that we create here in the software, when you create the border it creates it as stitches, so if you want it to be a different size you're going to be better off to undo and recreate it, because if you're resizing it you're going to have to be recalculating stitches and it may not work quite as nicely as generating it at the size you want. The last thing I want to do, I'm going to delete this. And the last piece I want to talk about is the Add Applique button. I'm going to click on Add Applique now, and that's telling it when I create this border, I want it to have applique steps as well. I'm going to click on the options to look at these for a second. It's got a standard applique, so the standard applique is going to be a placement stitch, a tack down stitch, and the satin stitch at the end. I'm going to leave all the other defaults as they are. Click OK. I'm going to make certain I have my design selected so it knows what to size this border to. I'm going to click the green check mark on the left side to apply, and now it's created that applique, and that's going to give you that patch look. So I would have a placement stitch, I could lay down my piece of fabric or my backing, it would do the tack down, I would trim it, and it would finish with a satin stitch. The last tip I want to tell you is just if you're trying to create a patch or trying to create a border at a very specific size, and the easiest way to do that is to create a hoop that is that size. So I'm going to come into my change hoop and say I want to make a patch that is four inches wide and two and a half inches tall. I'm going to use a really easy shortcut where I don't have to worry a lot about the math. If I type four and the quote mark for inches and click the tab button on my keyboard, it converted it to 102 millimeters. I wanted my height to be 2.5 inches, so I'm going to type in 2.5 inches with the quote mark again, and when I click tab, it converted that to 64 millimeters. Now let's click OK. And with my design not selected, when I go over to the border tab, I want to set my margin to zero, so the border will go all the way to the edge. I'm going to leave it with a satin line. I'm going to leave my options all as they are, so I have my four millimeter satin line. It's creating my applique steps. When I click the green check mark to apply, it will create that patch or that border with the applique at the size of that hoop. So I've created the border at exactly the size I want. Now you will notice in this case it is on top of my monogram. No big deal. I can just go over to the Home tab, click Layout Order, move to Back, and that will move that border back behind my monogram stitching. So I hope with this you've learned a little more about the Border tab. Have a great day!